Well, hello everyone, Dan Herbert, Dan Herbert Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I'm back here at my blue chip mine. Yes, this is an underground gold mine, a historic one. I love this place. There's so much I can do here, so much to find, so much history. Today, I'm here to plan out what the year's work projects are gonna be at this site, and also see if I can collect some of those amazing quartz crystals in the gold-bearing quartz seam that I found in Attic number three. That's the plan for today. Wish me luck, and I hope you enjoy. Now it is January 10th today. Winter has given us a little bit of a break from the harshness that has been, you know, the winter of 2022-23. It has been a brutal winter so far, but the weather has warmed up a bit. Down here near the coast, snow has melted and I can get into sites like this. And that's why I'm down here today. I was suffering from a bit of the winter blues. I needed to get out and do some mining and prospecting and I knew this site would be open. So I have all sorts of things I wanna do here. I wanna start sort of organizing it, planning it out. And that crystal seam in the gold bearing quartz vein up in attic number three that I got so many great crystals from a few years back has been, you know, calling me to come back. So I'm gonna head underground, see if I can find any more of those crystals, get some material that might have some nice coarse gold in it, and yeah, play around a little bit. There's part of the quartz vein. One of the three jobs that I wanna do this year, I have three tasks I wanna do at this mine this year. One of the three jobs is I wanna salvage about 100 kilograms of the gold bearing quartz vein from this site to take down to Jason's Crushers and Processors down at Mount Baker Mining and Metals and see what kind of grades we can get in a more of a bulk sample. We have taken small pockets, just little areas of really good high grade stuff and assayed them and got some nice results. But we wanna know if taking a bigger sample just of more general quartz, what overall this site holds. So that will be one of our pro projects for this year. I won't be doing that today, but what I will do today is identify some of the spots where we can get that material. And I think I'll invite Jason up here to help collect all that, because he sure wants to come and see this mine. Look at that quartz. Okay, maybe not quartz. Now up over here is at number one. Oh, I'll push my way through the brambles. Ow! Ooh, this is at number one, and it is partially collapsed in. You know, all this stuff, and like that seems to be fresh this year. Ooh, that is dangerous. Look at that stuff right there. It is about to fall. In fact, I don't even want to go underneath that at the moment. That is so ready to come, and you can see some of it has come really recently. I don't feel safe right here. I'm going to back off. There is at number one, and that is a good chunk of the quartz vein running through there, and my water supply. And I can see definitely a lot of quartz came down with this that we will collect once we figure out how to drop that so it doesn't kill someone. Anyhow, I'm not going over that way anymore because I don't want to be underneath what could come down. And there's a nice sample of the gold bearing quartz seam. Gold uh, on this quartz seam is usually found in these pockets of, you know, the boxwork quartz with some little crystals in it. That's typically where the gold is found. I will put that aside for when, you know, Jason and I collect 100 kilograms of the stuff. And a little bit closer view of that little pocket within that vein. That's where sulfides used to be and have rotted out or oxidized out. Sulfides, most likely iron sulfide there, as you can tell by, you know, the rusty stains all around. I do not know how I'm going to deal with that up there. It's so dangerous. It's just hanging by a thread. And it's so far up, the water in the adit is what I want to use to actually do one of the other tests. I want to test some material over there, but I need to pump from that adit. It's full of water. And there is no way I would walk my hoses over to that from this side going underneath that. It's ready to go any second. Hopefully nature brings it down on its own before I get here in the summer to do this. Otherwise, I would have to make myself a new trail going around the other side to, to get into the attic from that side so I'm not coming in this way under the danger rocks. Maybe I'll toss some rocks up there and just see how unstable it actually is. <sighs> not even close. <laughs> Ugh. 
Well, a couple rocks being thrown up didn't bring it down. I might have to get a rope with like a grappling hook, toss it up there and see if I can reef it down from way back here. That will be a project for another time. Now up here is another place that they have. Ah, ah. Let's see if I can get up here. Okay, up here is another place they've dug into the quartz vein just a little bit. Oh, there it is right there. There's the quartz vein going through, going out the other side over here. This is not a place I've, I've sampled from at all. Not one bit. But there's the quartz vein right there. It goes up a bit here, over a bit there. And it's one of the more accessible spots to get some quartz from all the way through and around. There's pieces of it. And again, when Jason and I come up to get, you know, 100 kilograms, we'll probably come in here and grab some from this spot. Specifically looking for more of the mineralized stuff, but wherever it's, you know, big and thick and lots of iron staining, we'll definitely throw a feather and wedge there and pop a piece off and take, you know, 100 pounds or something from in here. Yes, I use pounds and kilograms <laughs> interchangeably here in Canada. Canada, we work in kilograms, but we're still so used to working in pounds, I go back and forth between them. But anyhow, there's the big court seam we will sample from. And outside the main number two adit here, it's actually hard to sample the quartz seam because it's way up there. They drove this adit in underneath the main quartz seam. And the main quartz seam is way up there. Nothing which you can access in any way to sample. Though, it does go over the edge here at some point, which is where we want to try to find it again to sample up there. And that adit I was just at was just right there. And then there's this ledge right on top, which is right in line of where that court seam should be. So I'm going to go and have a look around in that ledge right now, just to see if there's anything that might indicate an easy way to get at that quartz. This almost looks like it was one of the old roads that they pushed in, probably to get to adit number three, before adit number two was ever dug. Adit number two is the newest, and they would have excavated that whole area down there to get in at it. At it? At it the at it and possibly the road came right through here straight on at some point because this really looks like a little section of an old road bed a tree just came down right there just like old time but a tree pulled up some roots and stuff i'll go check that out to see if it exposed bedrock but really the seam should be right here i'll see if i can get an idea okay see it right there just underneath all those branches i see it so it comes in right about here we'll mean some digging but i think i can probably find it if i dig through here and yeah just picking through this get a mattock up here and you'd be down to bedrock in no time digging through that easy easy and i said there was three jobs to do collecting the 100 kilograms is just one of them the other job is this overburden right here that makes up this whole big bench everything in here is kind of like a a dirty sand, a muddy sand, if you will. And what it is, is the rock around here is a gabbro, a granite, a gabbro, and it is decomposing. As it decomposes, it breaks down into little tiny, tiny grains that make up dirt and sand here. All of this bench is the bedrock from up there decomposing slowly, weathering off the surface and leaving what almost looks like topsoil, but it's kind of a sandy topsoil. What I wanna do here is I wanna bring a high banker, pump water out of adit number one, and run this material through a high banker, and like run a yard of it or more, and see if when the bedrock up there was decomposing, if it was leaving little grains of sulfides or grains, specifically gold, behind in the dirt that is eroding off the bank. I wanna run a lot of this and see if we get weathered out gold in it and see what the eluvial material holds. And I think I can set up a high banker right down there very easily, uh, pumping out of adit number one, and then just have some sort of trough that I can make some sort of trough that I can dig right out of here, right out of the edge of this bank, goes right down into the high banker. Probably set the high banker up right there, actually. 
it should be easy. Let gravity do most of the work. And here's another area right outside edit number three where we can get a lot of that quartz from the main seam. In fact, we might even be able to pop that cap rock off there and get a big chunk of quartz from right underneath it. Woohoo! Don't mind me while I fall. Yeah, it might be tough to get that off. I think we, I think we can. And then there's a whole lot of quartz right here. Very rusty. You can see it's really rusting out down here. Nice looking stuff. Nice boxwork quartz. Could hold some gold values. And one of the richer areas of this quartz vein we found over the years was right here. We've actually excavated a lot of material from right here over the years. And you can see, I was here last fall taking some more samples from right there. We basically have everything we can get out of there easily and safely already. Uh, but if I trace this up, the quartz vein pinches off to nothing. It actually goes away right there. However, we do know it opens up further on. So one of my other tasks here, and this isn't one of the jobs I was, one of the three jobs, but one of my other tasks at some point is to start digging down into here until I can expose that vein again and follow it along. If you saw my video from last year, I was looking for it over here and I never did find the vein itself. So I kind of have to trace it, track it to see where it goes. Unfortunately, there's just so much uh, slough from above, so many, so much debris that it's hard to dig into this nicely. And you can really see here that decomposing rock, decomposing right there, sloughing down. And this is that decomposed rock, very fresh off the hill. It's almost just like a sand, almost like a beach sand or something, but that's just the rock breaking down. And the main vein, after it comes through this whole debris pile, comes over here and breaks out right through here. This is the vein. I don't know if I can get down to show it to you. That's actually quartz right there, about two inches thick. There you go, you see it better there. Um, and again, when we come to take our 100 kilogram sample, we will take some from right there too. Because uh, this is something I'll be able to break off fairly easily. And it goes out that way. Pinches down to about an inch right there. And then I don't know what it does underneath all of this. But let me show you the third big job we want to do this year. It's right there. Now this is where I have focused most of my work in the last few years on this mine. Is what I call adit number five. And I call it adit number five jokingly because there is no hole here. There's no portal into the mountain. There's nothing more than where I've sort of scratched away at the surface. But if I was ever to dig and add it, this is probably where it would go. I like this spot a lot because I've found so much visible gold right here. This whole wall was covered in a quartz seam that I chipped off and you know, every second piece I chipped off, I could see gold on it. Now, I have taken all of the visible quartz from right here off. There's still a big seam right in up there, but that had no gold in it. It was only the stuff on the face right here that had gold. So what I wanna do this year is I wanna go down. I wanna follow that face down into the ground and see if I can get more quartz from it, which means I have to remove all this. A lot of it is just debris at the moment, but you only go down about three inches and that debris turns into rock. So I have to start chipping and breaking away rock to bring that face down anymore. This will be me working a bit more on my add it number five. Let's do a bit of work right now. Okay, that's enough work for today. No, today my job is to go into add it number three and see if I can find some of those quartz crystals and maybe grab some of that material that's got gold in it. Now let's go do that. And today's task is inside there. Now before I go in, I gotta go get my flashlights and my hard hat on and then head in and see what it looks like. Okay, hello bears, hello bears. It looks pretty much like I left it last time I was in there. No new collapses or anything. Looking good. Put on the brain bucket. Not that this would help me if anything actually fell in there. I guess this is just protecting my head if I stand up too quick and go bonk. But it's good to have the safety equipment on and a headlamp. Plus two more flashlights to light the area. Though I'm only in like 10 feet. I'm just gonna be down around the corner. It'll be really close. So I'll get lots of light from outside as well. And lots of fresh air from outside as well. So uh, I'm just barely inside. Though I will go and check back in each of the corridors very quickly. Make sure there's no, you know, hibernating bears or anything like that. Looking good. Looking good. 
There's why I have the helmet on. <laughs> New animals. One passageway, the other passageway, and the third. And I can see to the end of each one. That is where I'm working today. Now this is where I'm going to be working today. This is the court seam here, going right through and all around. And a lot of what I'm doing today is going to be taking the debris that's left over from previous diggings here. But I am looking for quartz crystals specifically. I'll be taking all the debris to run you know, into the bucket to go and run and see what kind of gold values it has. But over in this corner, in the past, I found some really nice quartz crystals. And I want to go and look and see if I can find any more. Though, it does look like it's possibly been cleared out a bit more since I was here last. Well, that's the stuff I want. And I am looking each shovel full to see what kind of crystals are coming out. Now there's my first fragment of a quartz crystal. Just pulled out from way down there. I have a feeling the crystal pocket actually goes down, up, and under. So I'm hoping in the shovel full there will be others. I think I see a few little fragments in the shovel full. Let's show you what that looks like and then we'll go see if we can find some full ones. Now everything inside here is very rusty because the sulfides oxidizing makes rust. So that's why everything here is orange. But there is a chunk of crystal. It's not completely crystal clear. It's a little bit milky, but hey, we're on the right track. And that was from way down in here. Another piece of a crystal. Very muddy. Fragments. Oh yeah, there they are. There's the tip of one, there's another one, and another one, and another one. There we are. We're back into the crystal pocket. Let's see if we can get something nice out of there though. Seeing lots of little points coming out of here too. Not just the big broken ones, little broken ones. Hopefully there's some little solid ones as well. Well, it definitely looks like I got through the pocket there. I've been digging for a while now without any new crystals coming out, so it looks like I've gone in one side and out the other of the crystal pocket, and now I'm just getting material from the vein that could maybe have gold in it. But uh, no new crystals coming unless I break into a new part of the crystal pocket. I will continue. I'm seeing crystals come out again. I moved over to the left and I got nothing but boxwork quartz. Moved back to the right and I started getting um, decomposed sulfides, just this brown gooey stuff. After I dug in back behind the decomposing sulfides, crystals started coming out again. Maybe back into the pocket. Well, one of my three lights just went out. My headlamp is still working. That light's still working, but my big light just went out. So it is the biggest draw on batteries for sure. Been here for about two hours digging. Got a full bucket of material that could have nice gold in it. Uh, you know, half a dozen crystal fragments. I never found that big crystal I was hoping for. 
uh, but had a lot of fun. Great place to hang out on a soggy winter's day inside the mine. It's kind of nice in here. And uh, yeah, this material here, I will be sifting through it to see what kind of quartz crystals went in that I didn't see. And then it will be going down to uh, Jason from Mount Baker Mining and Metals to crush and process and see what kind of gold values are in this part of the seam. Again, I'm gonna do a big mass sample outside um, all over the place to get a couple of hundred, well, a hundred kilograms. But we'll take this stuff down too and see what this part of the seam holds for real because the samples I've done here before haven't been really good samples. Jason does good work. Anyhow, go pack these buckets out and then see you on the outside. Before I go outside, let's have a quick look around here. Uh, inside this attic, it goes three different ways. Left, center, and right. Uh, right is where we were working, over there. Uh, center goes back fairways. Not fairways, it's 40 feet or something. Lots of drippy, drippy, drippy happening. And you can see on the floor, it's just littered in quartz. Everywhere you look on the floor is quartz pieces. They were following the quartz vein back for sure. And it does come back as far as it ends. There's the quartz vein right there. Right there, and over here too. Going back, the richest spot we've found in this mine is actually over here. This side has had the best results. And again, if you look down, you see quartz everywhere here. And uh, we did some assays of the vein up in there and got some very nice results. And going up this way, you always have to watch your head on the old drill rod that's stuck there. I banged my head once real good on it. But sweeping the floor in here, we always find, like if I just take the floor and sweep it up and pan it out, I would find free milled gold in it every time. And actually this is heading off in the direction of my attic number five over that way. And we're, I think it was right up there that Davey took the sample and got some good results. Good results were like 12 grams per ton or something like that. But yeah, that's my attic number three. Ah, there we are on the outside again. I never feel all that comfortable underground. I've never really been an underground type guy. Feels nice being back out in the wide open air here. Beautiful day considering it's January 10th. I think 10th today. Well, let's carry these buckets down to the quad. That's never fun. Let's have a quick look inside number two at it. Hmm, I need to bring my boots. Hmm. Boots are back in the truck. I guess this is as far inside number two added as we go today. It goes back about 100 feet, 100 feet, 100 meters, uh, 100 meters back and uh, just stop. It's a straight shot, nice and stable. Great little at it. Nothing too much exciting for mineralization that unfortunately the number three added much more exciting. Okay, let's go back and clean up some of these crystals to show you and uh, see what we got for crystals. The gold will be in a later video. I hate how dirty I get working around these old mine sites. All of that rust, all that oxide sulfides, stinky rust all over me. Oh well, still a lot of fun. Now, how am I gonna take those back on the quad? Hmm, well, there we go, that'll work. A little bit afraid about putting that mucky, yucky stuff up on the racks that would splash all over me, tip and fall, and I wouldn't be able to tie it down right. So just strapped it onto the back. It's a very short trip out. Hopefully they stay there. All back loaded in the truck with that nasty, nasty, rusty water. Ugh. Now, before I clean up those crystals and show you what we have there, my viewers have told me that they're liking the geology lessons and want to see more of that in my videos. So I'm going to try to have a geology lesson of the day in every video, if I can. Geology lesson of the day? Why is every single old gold mine covered in rust? That's all to do with sulfides. Almost every gold mine out there has the gold in combination with a sulfide, metal combined with sulfur. Now, the most common one out there is iron sulfide, also known as iron pyrite. Iron pyrite, when left out in the oxygen, not underground, but out in the air, will oxidize. First thing that oxidizes is the sulfur. The sulfur gives off sulfur dioxide, which is really stinky. And that's why all old mine sites smell bad. Then it leaves pure iron. 
the first thing that pure iron is going to do when it's in the environment is it's going to rust. It's going to oxidize as well, and it turns into iron oxide, which is rust. And that's why every old mine site is covered in yucky, orange, stinky material that gets on everything. There's your geology lesson of the day. Now let's go clean up those crystals. So here are a few of the smaller crystals all cleaned up. The bigger ones were nice, but you know, almost all of them were broken in some way. The smaller crystals were still intact, or lots of them were still intact. And there were a whole lot of fragments. Lots and lots and lots of fragments. You can't complain about some of these little guys. They're pretty. And you can see they could still be soaked a bit longer in the acid to take off a bit more of the rust staining. They only had a very, very quick soak to clean them up. Crystals are always fun. Always fun to find. Nothing like my crystals from Arkansas, though, that's for sure. And, of course, the best crystal from this whole pocket I found on my previous trip in here when I was collecting. It was a doozy, but not this trip. Well, I thought I'd stop by Jones Creek here to say goodbye. There's gold in that creek. I hope you enjoyed the video up at the Blue Chip Mine. Look back to my channel a lot this year for more videos from the Blue Chip. I plan to have three different videos this season at the Blue Chip. Three more, that is. Check out the YouTube channel for more. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me that thumbs up. If I haven't earned your subscription already, I hope I earned your subscription today. And a big thanks to everyone for watching, especially my patrons. Because of the support of my patrons, I get to make these weekly episodes of Dan Hurt Prospecting. Hope you're all having an amazing day. And until the next one. Bye.